All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, we've got an exciting interview with uh, John Tully scheduled here today. Uh, we've got John here. John is a member of the DLC. Uh, he's also a retired founding partner at KTGY. Uh, my name is Farid Shahid. I'm also an alumni of Cal Poly Architecture and a founding partner at 8020 Group, which is a real estate company in San Luis Obispo. Um, we're going to be going over some questions for John, uh, mainly about his experience at Cal Poly, a little bit about KTGY, and some timeless uh, skills that students can use uh, to better prepare for a career in architecture and the greater industry. Um, John, do you want to maybe start by introducing yourself uh, and sharing your Cal Poly story and a bit about KTGY? Yeah, I'd, I'd be glad to. Um, yeah, I came to Cal Poly in about 1975. I was maybe about five, five or six years out of high school. So I had spent some time in a junior college working, owning a little business, and I came to Cal Poly. And my my experience was 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 wonderful. I graduated in 1979. I came there as a landscape architect. Um, not long after I was there, I, I realized that my interests were maybe a little bit broader than landscape architecture. And so I started using my electives and some other outside work to try to take some more architecture courses, to take some more business courses and all that. So, but I did graduate in 1979 as a landscape architect. I was, uh, I was recruited out of the job fairs there on campus. I went to work at a firm and I became licensed um, a few years later. But pretty quickly, I, I discovered that my interests were a little bit broader and maybe a little bit more directed toward, toward development. And so I started taking some classes at UCI and was part of their, their development program. And I, um, and I soon left uh, the, the original firm that I was with, and I went to an architectural movement firm named Corbin Yamafuji. And it was probably the most significant uh, firm in the Orange County area at that, that time. And there we built a, a significant land planning department that was based on understanding products and understanding how people live. And that is the basis of my, my career. My, my mentor there was a gentleman named Bob, Bob Yamafuji, who was a wonderful person. And um, he really taught me a lot about that. I also had another mentor at that time, because I, I quickly sat on the John Lusk um, development board. John, John Lusk is a part of USC also, but I sat on his development board and did many projects. And his, his right-hand person, Don Stephenson, taught me about ethics and he taught me about um, honesty in the development business. But he also taught me how to respect the other members of the development team. And so his feeling was that not just the architect but, or the land planner, but the, the finance person and the construction person and the marketing person, all, all of their opinions were equal. And they had equal value. And he would go around the room and he'd get everybody's opinion. And collectively, we would come up with the right decision for a project, a no-go or go, or whatever we wanted to do. And I think those two bases of uh, Bobby Amafuji teaching me about how do people really live and Don Stephenson teaching me to respect others was, was, the, form, was the foundation of my career. And later on, I brought those when we started that teaching line. Um, KTGY was founded in 1991. There were five other partners. We all worked at a similar firm, and we all decided that we, we had a vision for what, what we wanted to do. We were, um, we were offered shares in maybe the previous company, and we thought we could spend our money in a little different way. And we thought that we had a vision for ourselves that, that, that we thought would be successful. The basis of KTGY was, as it started, is it was always run as a business. It's never been run by the senior design partner or anyone like that. It's always been run, run by a business person, a CPA, um, and it, it, it's always been run as, as a business. Um, we, we quickly realized that um, we had some cultural people, uh, cultural diversity in the firm. I have two Japanese uh, partners. One is from Tokyo, one was born in the States, one Japanese Hawaiian partner. And so the, the combination of those cultures, I think, really, really helped us. Uh, in the Japanese culture, there's a lot, lot of collaboration, and KTGY was founded on collaboration. 
in my 25 years there and sitting on the board of directors and building that firm into a 60, 70 million dollar firm, we never had a non-unanimous um, decision on the board. We always got along. We always talked things through. So, and, uh, and we carried that through to our projects and we tried to make sure that our clients understood that we were good at problem solving, but also good at listening and trying to include others in, in the process. You were talking a lot about how the at the top level, the leadership at KTGY um, put a lot of emphasis on collaboration and communication. And what I wanted to follow up with on that was how did you take that at the top level and inspire the designers and the staff um, to implement that policy to actually collaborate in a way that's very uh, synergistic and holistic with everybody? Yeah, yeah. So the culture of K KTGY, even though it's a large firm, everybody operates in small groups. And so they're, within inside, inside their group, there's a lot of autonomy. In other words, a partner in, in a firm like KTGY is responsible for its own book of business. And he has uh, design staff and production staff and engineering staff all working with him. But KTGY is also open fiscally, so our employees and people working on the projects know the contracts, know, know the budgets, know, know all that. So we believe in pushing down the authority. In other words, instead of holding it at the top, if you keep pushing it down, then people become somewhat self-directed and people understand what, what it takes to get a project. Yeah, it sounds like there's a lot of transparency and a lot of empowerment happening on, on all levels. Well, yes, and that's what we brought. That's when the six of us got, got together, we realized the issues that had arose in other firms that we had worked for and where we had all come from before. I think the people in the profession, the professional people, the architects, the planners, the landscape architects, they're all trying to do good, good projects. And if you just let them loose and give them some room to make some mistakes and to not do it exactly the way that the partner maybe wants it done, then you get much, much better solutions. Yep, yep. I think, you know, the, the actual industry itself is not just about design, it's about business. And an architecture firm is a business first and you have to take care of your finances and your people. Um, a lot of that stuff could be hard, I think, to translate when you're a student. So what are some of the key principles that you say you think are pretty critical in running a business and how can a student you know start to explore and learn some of those ideas to better prepare for that career in the, yeah. In the future yeah. yeah before i answer the question about the students i'll just share with you that of the original six partners all of us had one time or another worked for a non-design firm and had worked in the building industry we did work for builders developers jurisdictions or something else not like that. So for us, it was easy to understand how we fit into the big, big picture. And so I think for students, it's more di difficult. And I think it's hard to them to understand that when you come into an office, you're going to be working with a lot of people and a lot of other consultants, and they're all going to have their, their difference of opinions. And you have to be able to ne negotiate that. You have to be able to bob and weave and and sort of explain your thoughts, but you have to be open to that. So for students, as many interdisciplinary projects as you can work on, I, I would say great. Any outside projects or volunteers that you can do that's, that's interdisciplinary would, would be fantastic. And if you share that in an interview, when, when you go out for your fir first interviews, I think you're going to get a very positive response from, from employers. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I think we've got a couple minutes left. Any, any kind of closing comments or parting thoughts about some of these things that we've been talking about uh, the last 10 minutes to kind of, you know, share? Well, I, I, I think they're, the students are, are in a tough time right now with them going to be out of school for a little while and all that. And, and I think anything that they can do to utilize this time to realize that this there's going to be other people that they're going to be having to work with in the industry. So anything that you can latch on to in the summer that has a relationship to the building industry would be really, really good. And, and use that. When you go out on your first interview, you'll be surprised that 
employers don't want to just see your portfolio. They want to know who you are and what, what's your depth and how do you think and, and what did you do with your spare time? And all totally. That. So I, I think for students, it's really, really important. Awesome. Well, that was very helpful. Thanks so much for all these tips. And I guess if any of the students have any other questions, they can start to reach out in the forum. And yeah, I'll I'll wrap up the video the here. First question online, I, I put my email address on there. I put my phone number on there. I'll be glad to speak to any students, especially Great. those landscape architecture students. Yeah, awesome. Well, thanks so much for your time. You're welcome. Bye. Awesome.